as you can see in our head coach, it starts with him. I mean, my energy feeds off him, so there was never a doubt from Coach Graham, Coach Norvell, that that, that game was ever over. As long as there's time on the clock, we're still going to keep going. we got explosive players all all throughout our four wideouts and our running backs, as you can see. And basically, it's just kind of a, it's a representation of the character of our team. When you look at that uh, play, the Hail Mary is a pretty low percentage play, yeah. I would say. Yeah. Um, just talk about all the pieces kind of having to fall into place. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely uh, not a really high, high percentage throw for a quarterback. It was my first one, so I like to consider it beginner's luck, being one for one on Hail Marys. But basically, the, the object of that throw is basically give us a chance. Just give us a chance. You don't want to throw it out of bounds. You don't want to throw it too short. So I figured I'd throw it as high as I possibly can. And I warmed up before it and, and just basically gave us a chance. And I mean, as you, as you guys all know, Jim Strong, it doesn't even surprise me that he makes that touch. So, did you guys think at all about doing maybe a, a, a pass to the sideline and in that time and try to get in field goal range at all? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a thought. Coach Norvell talked to us talk to us about it afterwards, just about his thoughts on those types of situations. But basically, teams are ready for those 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 types of plays. And basically, if we did that and we incompleted the ball or, you know, God forbid, we didn't get out of bounds, there goes the game. So if we were in striking range and, you know, I could throw it. Uh, they knew I can throw it. I get, the, get to the goal line from there. And, you know, that was that. And now you guys have to, you know, turn right around and start preparing for Stanford. Does it really help to have an extra week for them, considering coming off an emotional win like that where there might oh, yeah. be a little hangover? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Coach did a great job of, you know, the hangover is gone. We're, we're focused on beating Stanford because if any team leaves a salty taste in our mouth, it's them. They took, a, they took it away from us last year. And basically getting this extra week of recovery, extra week of film work while they're, I believe, and I think they still have a game this week, it's just kind of a leg up, and we can feel more confident going into Stanford. I mean, obviously the bye week is always good uh, for injuries, but as hot as you've been playing in the offense, I mean, is the bye week going to come in not great spots? Oh, no, I think I think if you ask those big boys up front, they're, <laughs> they're, they're saying hallelujah for those bye weeks, getting as much ice tub, uh, you know, ice, stem, everything you possibly can because uh, we got a lot of veterans on the offensive side of the ball and some of those defensive guys are a little more fresher, so maybe that might affect them. They might want to get back on the field, but for us, um, you know, it's going to be it's going to be exciting to kind of watch Stanford this Saturday and recover for us personally. So that's a good thing about inexperience. The younger guys heal faster. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Some of the some of the younger guys they're all they're in the weight room in the morning jumping around. We're like, boy, you know, definitely <laughs> those days are over for me. I know people talk about for a quarterback, most improvement happens game one to game two. How much of a, a leap do you feel like you made his first first second start? Yeah, absolutely. I was actually talking to my high school coach about that. He was telling me that before. I did the same thing my my first year or my senior year had a really big improvement for my first and second game. But basically, it's just kind of a mindset going into the game, having that first start underneath my belt, having the guys just that much more confident in me, being able to you know disperse the ball or you know run the, run the ball effectively and kind of lead the team and basically uh, I think every week from here on out you just kind of gain more and more confidence I mean you see a guy like DJ Foster who's been playing for three years I kind of feed off his energy now just kind of learning from some of the veterans who have that much game time experience what did you think was the biggest thing you did better in the second start than the first I think it's pretty obvious just not turning the football over <laughs> I mean that was in the back of my head every single play not that that's like the one focus that I'm thinking about before every snap but it's just kind of like it's just like a personal it's almost like a lifestyle for the quarterbacks here at Arizona State for the next 20 years as long as coach Graham is here that you're going to see that as and you know it's part of our heart now you know it's just you know you don't ever want to put the ball in jeopardy even it's not even a fact so going into that game that was my one my one personal goal if I were to have one obviously to win the game but if we don't turn the ball over we win. We first said it was more of a challenge against USC just because the caliber of secondary on the disguised coverages compared to UCLA? I mean they're both such great opponents I mean as you can see they're both top-notch teams uh, I mean they recruit just as well as anybody in the entire country but USC did so many great things, but you win the game up front, offensive and defensive line, and their defensive line did an outstanding job getting pressure, and just for a team who doesn't pressure a lot, those guys up front made plays. So, um, But I, like I said, I can't say enough about our offensive line, just giving me two and a half, three seconds on just about every pass play, and, and then obviously our run game didn't get going, but it was enough to win.
Yeah, so speak about the run game, obviously you want the offense to be balanced, but mm -hmm. was it really just a lot of the scheming that UCLA and USC threw at you guys to really shut down the running game and dare you to pass? Uh, no, I mean, they didn't really do anything, uh, you know, specifically to stop the run or to stop the pass. It's just obviously in certain situations it calls for us to pass the ball so late in the third quarter and the fourth quarter it was pretty obvious that we needed to pass the football but we had a great running scheme going into that game a couple little a couple little um you know miscues as far as just the slightest you know when you play against such great teams just the slightest adjustments can can stop the run so going into this stanford game you'll, you know we're going to be back to our hard nose running football